Welcome everyone and thank you for joining the 8th Connect Community Call. Today, Alessia Bardi from CNR, who is the service manager of Connect, will present a new feature for the customization of the homepage. During the presentation, we kindly ask that you keep your microphones muted and cameras off. And for the Q&A session, please feel free to unmute and turn your camera on if you'd like to actively participate. You can submit your questions in there in the chat or in our shared Google Doc, which we posted in the chat. And please note that the session will be recorded, recorded and trans transcribed. If you wish to participate in the Q&A but prefer not to be included in the recording, let us know in the chat and we will ensure your contribution is edited out. Alessia, the floor is yours. Thank you for the introduction. So welcome to these eight community calls for um, Open Air Connect. So let me share my screen. Okay. Okay, what's on for today? Uh, we have a couple of technical highlights about new, uh, the latest releases of Open Air Connect. And then I will guide you through the option on how to configure the homepage. And I hope that we will have tons of time for question and answers on your side regarding the topic of this meeting, but also beyond that, if you have any. So let's start with some technical news. So the last community calls was in July. So uh, we did some uh, releases after that and we had some new features in addition to some uh, bug uh, solving, let's say. So the first option is the possibility to bulk remove project rents from your uh, configuration. So in July, you already have the possibility to add project in bulk. So basically you do a search and you can select all the projects that uh, are in the in the result list uh, and now you can do the other way around so you can search the projects uh, that you already selected and you can remove it so this is very useful when when you make a mistake and in addition we also added a new functionality a very powerful one in fact uh, for the um, gateways that uh, comes with an advanced or premium plan. And this is the possibility to override uh, the CSS. So you can add your custom CSS in your community gateway so that you can change uh, everything that you can change with the CSS. And um, and yes, so you, you can experiment, you can try, and uh, if you have any any problems, I can put you in, in contact with the development team who can provide feedback, suggestions on how to uh, use the functionality in, in the best way. So what's coming next? So um, first of all, I, we had uh, several requests to include patents. Mm. Uh, so in the next month, what you will see is that if we find a link from your publication um, to a patent, then the patent is also included. Mm. So you will have also a way to see the patents that are related to your research communities, your, your research infrastructure. Um, in addition, we are extending our backend technology so that we can provide um, metadata snapshots that include not only um, research products, but also the entities that are related to them. So uh, you may know that every six months we published uh, a snapshot, a dump, we say a metadata dump of the uh, metadata records that are included in your gateway, if it's public, and now it includes only research products. So publications, data sets, 
software and other types of research products. Uh, but in the next uh, deposition that is planned in December or January, uh, that will include also organizations, data sources, uh, patents, of course, and, um, and what else, and projects. So everything that is related to your community will be available in that metadata snapshots. So if you're using the snapshots to build uh, additional services, that you will find more information to power your uh, your community service. And with the same backend enhancement, of course, we can also improve our uh, search and browse capabilities in your community gateway. So you will have uh, advanced search and browse functionality for projects, data sources, and organizations. Um, we are also working on the criteria for sub-communities. Okay, so the, the concept of sub-communities is something that we have for the advanced plan. And with sub-communities sub allow, allow you to, let's say, um, identify among the research products of your community, which belong to a specific sub-community. That can be mathematic communities or a community related to uh, a specific topic of research. And, but for now, we couldn't really give you the power to decide how to identify the sub-communities. So we will do this in the next month. And this development activities is powered by, uh, is funded under a couple of projects. So one is an Italian project and the other one is um, Silake, which is uh, a project under the EOSC uh, umbrella, let's, let's say that. Last but not least, I am working on a user guide about the administration dashboard of your gateway, and that will cover each and every configuration option that you have. Okay, so the topic of today is how to configure your homepage because um, we have introduced uh, a new functionality in your administration dashboard, uh, which is the um, homepage plugins. So the homepage plugins, you can consider them as HTML sections that display information. And the information can be static, hard-coded, can be configurable by you, or it can be fetched via um, APIs. Now it's very abstract, <laughs> but then we will see examples. And we have uh, 14 plugins now, and this plugin can be placed in any position uh, you want in the homepage. We have 11 with a specific goal. So they, they are configurable, but up to some degrees because they are specific mm, for a specific type of content. While three of them are generic and they give you the power of adding anything you want in your own page. And these three generic uh, plugins are uh, those that you see in this, in this slide. So, you have a generic plugin for custom cards. So it looks like uh, you, can, um, you can have these three cards, you can add text, you can add links, you can change the icon, and you can, for example, link to services of, of your community, for example. Uh, we have a custom paragraph, which in fact, there are two paragraphs, one at the top and one at the bottom. And here again, of course, you can write your own text um, and you can change uh, the image. And finally, it's the most, the most generic one because it's a custom HTML. So it's basically an empty HTML page that you can uh, configure as you want. So you can add 
content, you can add images, you can add link, whatever you can do with HTML, you can do it with this uh, generic homepage plugin. And you can add HTML code, but you can also edit uh, the content with a what you see is what you get editor. So it's easier also for those who uh, do not know uh, the HTML language. So the predefined plugins, uh, as I said before, um, they have a specific goal. So um, in this uh, in this table, I try to summarize um, what's the specific goal that this plugin uh, could help you address. So uh, let's start with a simple one, the search bar. Well, the goal is that you want to have uh, a discovery functionality, the possibility to search. And you can decide if you want to place it on the top, on the bottom, we suggest to keep it on the top, of course. Then we have the plugin for gateway information, and this show details of the gateway configuration. And it has a lot of configuration option. Why? Because you can decide which kind of information you want to show and what you do not want to show. For example, uh, do you want to show how many um, project grants have you selected? You want to show how many um, subjects have you selected in your configuration? Hmm? All, all this little detail about the gateway configuration can be opt-in or out. Um, then we have the plugins for the sub-communities. So this is uh, a plugin that allows you to, to, to show to the users which are the sub-communities of your, of your community. And this is available for the advanced plan. And then we have some plugins but that are more, let's say, about documentation. So instructions on how to use the gateway, um, information that you can use to link to your training materials or in general, open science, uh, best practices or guidelines for your community, and also instructions on how to use the gateway. And this uh, includes information that uh, I prepared. Uh, uh, so the, the user guide, and once ready, we will also add the link to the guide for the managers if you want. Um, we have a plugin for promoting, suggesting, let's say, to suggest other services of open air that could be of interest to your community. Um, for example, suppose that you are the manager of a community in um, uh, health science, for example, and you know that one of the main barrier for sharing research data in health science is the privacy. So you cannot share data that contains personal information. Uh, therefore, you know that one of the services that could really be helpful for your researchers is, um, is a service that can anonym anonymize the data before it can be shared. So you can take the open air service for anonymization and suggest it to your researchers. You can suggest Argos for the data management plan. You can suggest, um, I don't know, call Explorer for getting the links between publications and data sets and so on and so forth. So with this plugin, you can basically um, have the list of all the open air services and then pick those that are relevant for your community. Um, still because we do believe that you are the best person uh, that can suggest um, best practices to researchers in your community, we also have a plugin to suggest repositories and journals. 
So uh, in your administration dashboard, you are able to say that um, this repository is relevant for my community and I want all of its content to be included in my gateway. But in addition, I would like to suggest the repositories to my researchers. I want that they use it. So with this plugin, you put in the home page um, a section where all the repositories and journals that you want to suggest are shown. Um, then, oh, sorry. Then we have the plugin for supporting organizations. Okay, this is uh, it's simply the list of organizations that are supporting mm, the gateway. Uh, we have a plugin for the open air graph information. Mm, this um, this is basically a section where uh, we explain what the open air graph is and um, how it is used in your gateway and how important it is to use open research information. Uh, the text can be adapted then for your specific need. In fact. Finally, the last plugin is the one about statistics. This is a plugin that connects to uh, another open air service, open air monitor, and basically shows charts about open science indicators. And there are, I think, six charts that you can choose. So you can show all of them, or you can choose only a subset of them uh, to be shown in your homepage. If your community also have um, a monitor dashboard, then the plugin can link directly to your monitor dashboard. So we create uh, another connection to, to the other service that, that you are using for, um, for open science monitoring. Okay, so um, how do we use the plugins? So basically, you can go to, to the administration dashboard of your uh, gateway. You go to pages and menus, you search for the home page, and then click on manage plugin. What you will see is a list of the available plugin. You can also show only those that are active, but if you want to to enable something, then you have to ensure that this option is not clicked. So you will get the full list. And you can decide to enable or disable the plugin. You can move it up or down. And you can edit uh, the plugin. So configure it, basically. And each plugin has its own configuration option, as we will see them. Uh, Instead, the generic plugins can be found in the at the top in this plus button, add custom plugin. And there you can choose which kind of plugin you want to add. And if I remember correctly, by default, the plugin is added on the bottom of the list. So you have to scroll down in order to, uh, to click the edit button and start configuring uh, the, uh, the custom plugin. Okay, so I have not prepared uh, any other slides because I would like to do a live walkthrough with you. So I will take a community gateway and I will show you how you can configure its own page by adding, removing, and configuring uh, a couple of, uh, of plugins. So let me go here. So for this walkthrough, um, I decided to use the Digital Humanities and Cultural Heritage Gateway that you can find uh, here, dh-ch-openr.eu. Uh, I don't know if um, uh, Maya maybe can share the link uh, on the chat, um, but it would be best 
if you go to your own community gateway and you access your administration interface, because in this way you can try the same thing I'm showing uh, in this demo. Because clearly, if you are not a manager, you cannot see the administration part. So we sign in. I use my opener account, but probably most of you uh, will sign in with Edugain or other types of uh, login. But in my case, I have an opener account. OK, so now that we are uh, logged in, we can go to the dashboard and go to the home page. Okay. So now, as you can see, we only have few plugins uh, enabled. So the search bar on the top. Uh, let me do a thing. Let me open the home page here. Okay, perfect. And let's go back to the plugins of the home page. So we have the search bar on the top, which is this one. We have the gateway information, which is this box. We have the browse by sub community right here. In this case, we only have two communities and the supporting organizations, which is the section at the bottom. If you click on preview, of course, you get a preview of <laughs> how it looks like. Okay, so let's try, for example, to um, edit the search bar because I don't like this thing, you know, digital humanities and cultural heritage, digital humanities and cultural heritage, too much repetition, I want to remove it. Hmm? I think you will agree with this. So here I have the preview, but I can click on edit and decide that I want to remove the title. I want to keep only this big title here. And if I don't like it, I can add an alternative title. The alternative. In this case, I can remove this one and only show my alternative title. Now, this is not my case, so I will keep the short title, which is basically the, the title, the name of the community as defined in your, in your configuration. So now I can save it. And if I update my home page, now I get only one title. Good. So let's see the gateway information. Here again, I enter in the edit mode. And as you can see, it's plenty of information, hmm? plenty of it. Um, so for example, Let's see, I would like to also offer the possibility to an easy access to the facet, faceted search by fields of science and browse by SDGs. So I can add it and they appeared here just after the description. Uh, but you know what? I don't want to show the creation date. So I disable it. That's it. OK. And now I can save it. And if I go back to my home page and I refresh, the date disappeared. And I have possibility to uh, easily access the page for the browsing on sustainable development goals. Here it is. And and the browse by fields of science, which probably doesn't make a lot of sense for this gateway now that I think about it, because we are really in a specific uh, field already, the one of cultural heritage. 
So I can go back to my decision and say that I want the browse by sustainable development goals, but not the one on fields of science. It's not relevant in my case. Um, now let's see what else we can add, because for example, I would really like to have some um, suggested repositories. Yes, why not? So I can go here um, and the interface tells me that I have to go to the community content configuration to suggest repositories and journals. Okay, so we go there and I see that I have already selected several data sources, but none of them are suggested for the position. And you know why? I would like really to suggest the archaeology data service. So I can enable the suggest for deposit. I'm sorry for the address. Okay. Sometimes it, it shows. And I can also write a message for researchers. For example, use this repository for data in archaeology. And I'm probably mistyping archaeology as usual, but okay. So now I save it and if I go, where it is, if I go back here, I should now see it, perfect. So I can go back to my, to my list and enable it because I forgot to enable. And in my homepage now, I should see that the archaeology data service is suggested to the researchers. Interestingly, this decision also changes the deposit page of the gateway. The deposit page is the page where researchers can go and find uh, repositories that they can use for the position of publications, data, whatever they have. And they have three options. They can decide to search for any uh, repositories that are compliant with the open Air guidelines. They can decide to check which are the Zenodo communities that are suggested by the community managers or use the suggested repositories. So in this case, they can click and they will see that this repository is suggested by uh, the community managers. Um, and other interesting items that um, I would like to add to this home page are the statistics, because they give an idea of how the community um, is uptaking the adoption of open science practices. So I'll go back to my administration dashboard with the plugin and I see the statistics. Okay, so this moment uh, there is an exchange of data between this service, OpenR Connect, and the service that uh, calculates statistics, which is OpenR Monitor. And, and these are the indicators that you can choose from. So the percentage of open access publication, of open access data sets. You have a map uh, to see which are, well, the countries that are mostly publishing in your, in your domain. Uh, we have the numbers of data sets with a persistent identifier and uh, the, total, the total downloads of publications hmm? by number, uh, by year of publication. And finally, the publications by access right over time. Hmm? So that we know that in 2022, we had 
53k open access publication and 7k with unknown access right. So what can you modify here? So of course you can modify the title that by default is indicators, but you can add whatever you want. You can decide what to show and what not to show. So for example, I don't want to show, I don't know, the publications per country. I don't want to show it, so I remove it. And I can also add an external link. So for example, in the case you have a monitor dashboard, you can add the link to your monitor dashboard. For now, I will add a simple link to the OpenAir website, but uh, uh, and you can add uh, a text. Hmm? Go to OpenAir. So I save it. Now we also have the link. Go to OpenAir, and in my home page, where is my home page? Here. If I refresh. I forgot to enable it as usual. Yes, I have to enable it. And if I do, I can see it here. Maybe it's not very nice to have it at the bottom, in fact. I would like to have it a little bit up. So what I can do is that I can move it up. Up, up, until I reach the, uh, the position that I prefer which in this case, it's, uh, let's see, search link and deposit uh, again, just after the browse by sub community. So now I have the search bar, the information about the gateway, the discovered content by, by sub communities, and then my indicators. And here you can do whatever, really whatever you want. So for example, if you want the users to have instruction on how to use the gateway, you can enable uh, this plugin that will show the different functionality that they can use. Uh, and you can edit all the text. If you have um, materials about open science, then please do enable the learn and connect because in this case, you can really add uh, your links to open science guides and practices for your, for your communities. So in this case, you can edit the description here, and then you can edit each card. And to edit the card, you have to click on the pencil here, and now you have the all the configuration option for the card, including the... Uh, the icon, so you can choose the icon from this set uh, from Google font, whatever. Um, okay, I have to double check this. So in the end, you can really do uh, whatever you want. And um, as, I, as I said, you have the custom plugin. Uh, no, I want to save. You have this custom plugin that you can add and show uh, whatever you want. Hello. World. And then I can enable it and show it at the bottom. Then clearly you have to add your image and ensure that is properly properly visualized. Uh, I think now it's a little bit skewed because I add very very few text, and so the space that it's um, used by the section is too small. Uh, but this is to get an idea of uh, what you can do 
uh, with these plugins and how powerful uh, they are. Um, okay. So I think we reached the questions and answers part of this community call. Uh, just as can reminder that if you want to stay up to date with the enhancements with the feature release of the service, you can check out the roadmap on Trello and uh, and also the change log that is available on the opener catalog uh, for the uh, opener connect service. So let me show it to you. Uh, so if you go on the main openair.eu website, you can access the catalog from here. And for the Open Air Connect service, you have all information about the, about the service itself, uh, all the benefits, the features, and examples of communities that are using the services. But most important, as I want to show you, is the under the resources and support, and here you can find the change log with a full list of all the changes that have been released when they have been released. And for more details, you can also access the, the roadmap where you can see what has been launched, what's in progress. Also, if we have some delays on some, on some activities, but uh, I think it's more or less normal for a community uh, run uh, services like this. So I will stop sharing my screen and I uh, would like to open the floor to the questions. Thank you, Alicia, so much for your presentation. This was really insightful. Um, everyone, please feel free to add your questions uh, in the chat or in the document shared. Uh, until now, we have one question. Um, where do the patent links come from automatically from the full text? This refers to your first part of the presentation. Yes, yes, Roger. Um, we have an algorithm uh, that goes into the full text of publications and finds links to, to many things. Mm. One of these things are links to data sets, linked to software, and we also have links to patents. And um, in order to find the links to patents, we have integrated um, the database of patents from Europe. It's called EPOSTAT, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so we include the patents as long as we find a link to, to a publication. Thank you, Alessia. Um, another question. How would it also be possible to try to find patterns based on the universities from the sorry from the database themselves? Uh, uh, oh yes, yes, of course. Um, I mean, the links between uh, publications and patterns are mostly inferred by the algorithm. But you're right, uh, because some repositories also provide metadata records about patents, about patents. So if they are good repositories, they may also have links to related publications. So for sure, we include the patent because they are hosted by a trusted repositories. And if the trusted repositories is also uh, uh, featuring the links to other objects, not only publications, but also funding links or links to data sets, then we include also that. Yes. Thank you. Our next question is um, regarding the plugins page. Um, uh, Andrea goes to the manage pages and menus, but cannot find it. Could you please show it uh, again? Yes. Okay. Uh, I lost it. Okay. So from the manage, you go to pages and menus, and then you have to look for the home page. 
because these are plugins for the home page. So you search for the home page and you click manage plugins. And here you have the list. Thank you. So our next question is, can you please show ways of customizing the banner of the home page? Uh, there were some issues with resizing the different screens. Hmm. The, the banner, uh, Elisa, uh, what do you mean by banner? Um, yes, sorry. Um, I mean about the, um, the background of the, for example, the page that you used, the, the digital humanities um, gateway. There is like a um, background. Uh, mm. Yes. Make it a bit more beautiful or how to uh, update that because we, we had some issues with resizing in different screens like in the laptops or bigger screens? Hmm. Huh. Honestly, I don't have specific suggestions now to give you, but um, I know that we have several gateways that use very nice, uh, let's say, images for, for the banner. Um, I don't know if, because also Ruger, that is manager for the, the Netherlands, gateway, the, the Dutch portal, they also use a pretty um, a pretty nice image for the black background. And I don't know if they ever experience problem with different uh, sizes of screen. So I don't know if you can add anything about this. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't seen any problems with it actually, um, but our image is quite wide and is repeating on the sides. So if you have a very large screen, it might be repeating. I think it's uh, if you want to do it correctly, uh, it has to be in the CSS of the page on how your uh, image is repeating and uh, uh, what should be done if you have a very wide display. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think um, we tried to resolve it. So I sent just the Daria gateway there. And I just noticed that on bigger screens, uh, you can see the, um, the page kind of repeating, but starting again. So it doesn't look that nicely in bigger screens. So I'll have to figure out how to resolve this. Um, I tried different things on with custom HTML. But yeah, I just I was just wondering about other space, the same issue. Thank you. Thank you all. Also, uh, another question from Elisa. Um, could you please quickly show again how to remove that extra short title? Ah, yes. Uh, let me show again. Okay, so you go to manage pages and menus. So we go to your plugin list. And it's on the search bar. So you add it and you decide not to show uh, the title and just leave the, the big one. If instead you want to add here the full name of Daria, then you can remove everything and write uh, digital humanities, et cetera, et cetera. But to remove the the, the small one, just remove the title. And of course, you can change it. Huh? If you think that you want two different titles, you can go to the community configuration under the profile. And here you have the display name of the community and the display short name. So these are the title and short title that you see in the, in the plugins. So you can change it to, to what you want what you want. And now, uh, no, ah, it's loading, it's still loading. Let's try again. Ah, because I added the other one, sorry. Okay, let's do it like this. And now 
we should see, okay. Mm -hmm. So you can also change your short name and display name based on what you prefer to see. In my screen, you also see index name of the community and index short name. This is not something that you should be able to see. Do not worry, this is an internal uh, thing. You will have the display name and the display short name. Thank you, Alessia, and thank you everyone for your questions. Um, would you like to add uh, another question? Would you like to raise your hand or, or speak and ask your question, anyone? So we have another question here. Regarding the suggested repositories and journals, you can only suggest repositories and journals that are recognized by Open Air as trusted or any link can be added. No, you can only add um, repositories and journals, but in general, data sources that are um, in Open Air. Mm -hmm. So Thank first, you. Uh, you register the data source in Open Air via the Open Air Provide service, and and then you can suggest it to your researchers. Because if it's a data source that is relevant for your researchers, we want this data source to be in Open Air. Thank you, Alessia. Um, we still have a few minutes. If someone else has another question. If everyone is covered, we can close the today's call. Alessia, would you like to add anything? Uh, no, I would like to thank you all for being here for the questions. And they will be a really good input for the user guide for administrators that I'm writing. So thank you very much. I will come back to you soon with, with more uh, news about that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Has a, have a nice afternoon and hope to see you in our next call. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.